Expansions in gaming are things that I really like, especially if it's for a game that's really good, because the first couple of games that pops into my head is the Battlefield 2 expansion packs, which add heaps of new stuff, such as new factions, weapons, maps, gameplay mechanics. I even remember pirate, <coughs> sorry, I mean, uh, buying a legitimate legal copy from an authorized retailer <laughs> with my dad as a child, and goddamn was it worth it. But you also have SWAT for Stechkov Syndicate expansion pack, but we're gonna have a look at the Fist Alpha DLC or expansion pack for Viet Cong. Now, I want to say that I screwed up on a colossal scale. I thought Fist Alpha and Purple Haze were two different things, which is why I got extremely frustrated trying to find a copy of both, when in reality I was looking for something that just didn't exist. Because the thing is, I searched everywhere for a copy of Purple Haze and Fist Alpha, when in reality all I had to do was just go into the settings of the normal Viet Cong game. And of course, I downloaded Fist Alpha from some dodgy website, and the thing is, I was playing the game, I was about halfway through the campaign, and then Windows Defense Defender, as soon as I start up my computer, it's like, oh, hey, we found some malicious cancer in your computer. We just went ahead and took the liberty of deleting the files. But staying on topic, Viet Cong Fist Alpha is where you play as a special forces captain called Warren Douglas. I've seen some things, man, and some stuff. Who has a very lovely southern accent, by the way. But it's a prequel to the original Viet Cong, where you see the development of the base Noi Pek. You are deployed within this region to try and get within good standings with the locals, as well as eliminate any Viet Cong in the area. Now this expansion gets almost everything that worked well in the first game and expands on it. We have beautiful jungle maps that can scare you at times when Viet Cong decide to pop out of bushes or you step on a trap. You also just get that same feeling like you're in a real jungle. One thing I personally hate in real life is the sound of bees. I hate the sound of bees like the buzzing sounds. Bees, wasps and hornets. A grease has some of the biggest motherfucking hornets I've ever seen in my entire life and when I hear that buzzing sound in this game, it puts me on high alert. But the gameplay is almost the exact same as the first game. You have moments of pure action, such as phantom bombing runs, plane crashes, and you're also sitting in the gunner seat of a Huey, and just shooting at Charlie down below. But you are never made out to be this untouchable action hero, because the game is very unforgiving. I played the game on the easiest difficulty, and I got my shit rocked. Because honestly, if this game is any indication of how real the Vietnam War was like, I'm very happy to be born in 2001 and not in the fucking 40s and 50s because the Viet Cong, they just pop out of thin air and they just keep on coming and coming. They don't stop. They just have a human wave offensive and they just ambush you and they just wait for you to get closer and closer and even when you think you've got the drop on them, they just fucking all swarm on you. God damn, it's scary. But speaking about this, you have some butt-clenching moments such as when you need to defend the base from a Viet Cong attack and they just keep coming and then you start to get bombed and you have to fall back and then you also want to get into a flanking position by walking through a minefield, but while the game has some great moments, it does get ruined by the stealth aspect. Now, I'm not a patient person, but I don't mind the occasional stealth-based games such as Hitman, even Cyberpunk, that's not a stealth-based game, but I do like the stealth mechanics in that game. But that's only when stealth works, and in Fist Alpha, it's pretty horrible and straight up frustrating. In the last level, which is an infamous level, you need to take out some anti-air guns and a couple of machine gun nests, all while trying not to set off an alarm that can be telepathically triggered in the most bullshit of ways. Now, my first attempt, I try to sneak up on them with a knife, and that wasn't that effective since when you get a couple of meters near them, they'll just stand up and trigger the alarm. And attempt number two is when I use the sniper a rifle to hit them from afar, so that seems logical, but that didn't work either because as soon as you pull the trigger, they trigger the alarm. So my third attempt was more of a common sense attempt, and that was to use the only stealth weapons in the game, which is a Sten Mark II and the pistol. But the thing is, the pistol is inaccurate from a distance, and even though you hit them in the back of their head, they'll stand up and trigger the alarm. You can use the Sten gun, but that's a submachine gun and also very inaccurate. I tried for a good hour to actually beat 
beat it on the easiest difficulty, and I imagine anyone else who's played this game when it was released probably has the same sentiment that this level is fucked. And the thing that I don't understand is that if you're going to take the game in a stealth direction, you gotta implement actual mechanics that make stealth somewhat bearable, as well as add in weapons that can abide by the rules of these mechanics. Because they did add a bunch of new guns, such as the VZ-61 Scorpion, the M14 with automatic and a scope attachment. Speaking of attachments, the SKS can have a bayonet put on it, as well as the Dragonov. The SVT, which is technically an AVT in the game, was added with a scope and non-scope. The DP-28 and ZB-53 mount machine guns were also added. But playing the Viet Cong series, especially Fist Alpha, while it is a good expansion to an already fantastic game, one thing that hangs over my head is why and how we went from this to Viet Cong 2. Now the thing is we will never officially know what happened in those offices in the Czech Republic and the thing is we can't just get Viet Cong 1 and repackage it as a new game and not introduce anything new because you'll eventually turn into the Far Cry series. Doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. Even though those are fucking great games. Far Cry 1 to 3, fucking elites. Don't really care for anything after that, but staying on topic, if you don't change enough things, you become Far Cry. If you change too many things, then you become a game that strays from its original idea. And I'm gonna just spitball some hypothetical things. By 2007, Viet Cong has sold over a million copies globally, but in 2003, when it was released with Call of Duty, Viet Cong sold 50,000 copies in the UK, whereas Call of Duty sold over 95 now, I know that this is a far-fetched comparison, but Call of Duty as a whole was a pretty massive success overall, right? And the gameplay style between the two games are very different, but I've seen people that have reviewed the game back when it was released, Viet Cong 2 that is, that the devs try to make it more like Call of Duty so they would appeal to a more casual audience. But that's not what Viet Cong is. It isn't a casual shooter. It's supposed to be more hardcore or a tactical shooter. Obviously, the term tactical shooter and Milsim are usually thrown loosely and interchangeably, but it's not a mil sim. I'd say it's definitely more on the tactical side. And that's just not what Call of Duty is. It isn't grounded in reality like Viet Cong 1. Especially when you make Viet Cong 2 off an already aging game engine for the time, then you get a game that would have fallen flat on its face. But you know, like I've said in the past, I'm not hating on Viet Cong 2. It's a good game. I definitely recommend that you try it, but obviously I recommend that you play Viet Cong 1 first, because you know what comparisons that I'm drawing. Drawing. But this leads me on to the next thing that you might not be aware of, and that is a company called In-Game Studios. The people that work for this company have worked on some pretty big games that you might be familiar with, such as Viet Cong, Arma, Mafia. I actually got into an argument with a guy about Mafia 2 in the comments section once, and his arguments were actually very persuasive. He opened me up to a whole lot of arguments and perspectives about the game that I wasn't really aware of, but I still stand by the fact that I love Mafia 2. But the reason why I'm bringing up this company is because on their website, they say they are creating an atmospheric cooperative first-person shooter for PC and for the console players, and it's set in the 20th century, America, and Asia. And they have a picture of what is clearly an M60 in the jungle, but they don't explicitly say what type of game that they're working on. But given their work on Viet Cong, this image, and uh, uh, me stalking all of their social media accounts, we can see that they are working on something potentially jungle-related. But don't take what I say as factual, it's just how I perceive things, and over only time will tell whether we get another narrative-driven Vietnam shooter, especially since 30th of the 4th 75, or 4th of the 30th 75 if you're American, has been cancelled, which is really a shame, but if you want to see other Vietnam-related content, do check out the playlist that is on screen. Anyways, my name is Tanto, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.